Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're working on the cosine rule so we can answer trigonometry questions from exercise 9a. So first of all, let's have a look at proving the cosine rule. So it's really important that we clearly label our diagram in a specific way. Angles are represented with capital letters, A, B and C, and then opposite those angles are the little letters associated with them. So if this angle here is A, capital A, then the opposite side over here must be written with a little a, in the same way as with C and the same as with B. So the way we're going to work out how we can link the three sides in an angle together is first by chopping up this triangle here and creating a bisector, not a bisector, a perpendicular line here. So we'll call this x and we'll split the side C into a distance x from here to here and the rest of that side which will just be called C minus x now. So what we'll do is we'll use Pythagoras' theorem on this left hand triangle here. We can use that now because it's a right angle triangle. So what we can say here is that C squared minus B squared equals A squared um, for uh, Pythagoras' theorem. Um, however, what we're going to want to use is the correct letters according to our diagram. So it's going to be B squared hypotenuse take away X squared will give us H squared. And what we'll do is we'll do the same thing for the right hand triangle now. So what we need is C squared minus B squared equals A squared again. What we're going to do is find out what this height H here is again. So what we're going to do is then a squared, the hypotenuse, take away this small length down here, which is c minus x squared, and we work out the height here. Now if both of these expressions here and here equal the height squared, then we can effectively set them equal to each other. So b squared minus x squared equals a squared minus c minus x squared. Let's have a look now at expanding this. What we need to do then is expand our double brackets properly as if we're doing one bracket times another bracket and then take away everything from inside this bracket here and what we'll see is we have a negative x squared on both sides so we can cancel out those and now we've just got b squared equals a squared minus c squared plus 2cx so let's find another expression for x here so what we're going to do here is work out another way that we can get x here and if we have an angle here and the hypotenuse then we can get the adjacent side on this uh, side here by using cos. So what we're going to use here is the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So here x is going to equal b times cos of our angle A here. So this is our angle A. So x this side here is equal to B times cos of A. And we're going to now substitute this in. So x here is going to represent B times cos A. So here we get our final answer and the final version of the cosine rule, which is A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. So this here helps us link three sides to an angle um, or three, two sides and an angle to another side. It helps link together three sides and an angle. So let's go through a little uh, starter question here. If we have the sides of four, five and six centimetres respectively, find the size of the smallest angle. Well, let's draw out a little diagram first. And we can clearly see here from this diagram that if that's the shortest side, then its opposite side is going to be the smallest angle. So this angle here is what we're going to be working out. So we'll need to call this angle A. So therefore, according to our rules of labelling triangles, this side over here is going to be little a, and then it doesn't really matter which one of these are B and C. So now what we'll do to work out the value of this angle here that we want to work out, we'll substitute in the values that we know, simplify a little bit, and then do a bit of rearranging to work out what cos needs to be. So cos of A 
needs to equal 0.75 and then we use the inverse button on our calculator to get the value of A. So A here is 41.4 degrees. Okay, so that's how we can use the cosine rule here to work out an angle if we know three of the sides. Okay, we can also use the cosine rule within a bearings question. So what we have here is a question where the Coast Guard station at B is 8 kilometres on a bearing of 60 degrees from Coast Guard station A. A ship C is 4.8 kilometres on a bearing of 18 degrees away from A. So it looks like our centre of reference point here is the Coast Guard station at A. And we want to calculate the distance from C to B. So I don't know how on earth you would try this question without drawing a diagram to start with. So we have a centre that we're working from as A. And whenever we're working with bearings, we need a north line in there. The first thing we're told is that Coast Guard Station B is, uh, uh, is 8 kilometres away on a bearing of 60 degrees. Secondly, we're told that ship C is 4.8 kilometres away on a bearing of 18 degrees. And what we want to work out is the distance of the dotted line from B to C at this position here. So what we ideally have here is a side A that we don't know. We have two sides that we do know, B and C. And do we have the angle in between? Well, if we know the whole angle is 60 degrees and we've got an 18 degree angle here, we must know the angle between the lines B and C here that gives 42. So what we can do here is work out a missing side if we have two of the sides and the angle in between them. So substitute the values in, do a bit of simplifying, square root your answer, and you get A is 5.47 kilometres. Now generally we would always say here, make sure you do a positive and negative 5.74, but this is a distance, it's not negative, it's just positive. So understanding the context of the question means it must be 5.47. OK, so when you've got a bearings question like this, please make sure you can draw a clear diagram and, and make sure you know uh, what to label your sides as. OK, a slightly more tricky question here is going to involve a bit of uh, algebra and quadratic formulas. So in the triangle PQ, X, uh, PQ is X centimetres, QR is uh, X plus 2 centimetres, P to R is 5 centimetres, and this angle here is 60 degrees. Calculate the value of X. What we've got here, I'm just looking at this PQR angle here, we've got uh, two sides and an in-between angle, and we know the answer. So we can substitute a lot of this expression here into our cosine rule to be able to work out the answer. Now, because 60 is the only angle we're working with here, this has to be labelled A, capital A, because that's the only angle that we've got in our formula. So therefore the 5 must be labelled little a, and then it doesn't really matter what we call B or C. So substituting these values into the formula, and expanding using cos 60 is 0 0.5, we get x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus another x squared minus 2x squared plus 4 minus plus 4x uh, times 0 0.5 and simplifying all of this subtracting the 25 on the other side so we're able to solve it and we get x squared plus 2x minus 7 minus 21 equals 0. Now unfortunately here we can't uh, create some double brackets so that we can solve it by factorization. So we're going to have to use the quadratic formula here. So whip out your quadratic formula, substitute the values in, and we're going to get here x equals 3.69. Now here, remember, with the quadratic formula, we'd obviously get positive or negative values, but we should only take the positive value given that x has to be a length. Right then, your turn to have a go at some questions here. Pause the video and try out these questions 4 and 11. 
Right, well done for having a go at these questions here. Let's first draw a diagram for question four. Uh, from a point A, a boat sails due south with a from for seven kilometers. So from A, it's going to go down by seven kilometers to the point B. Uh, the boat B leaves and moves on a bearing of a hundred degrees for ten kilometers. So from here, it's going to go at 100 degrees for 10 kilometers until it reaches C. Find the distance from C to A. So what we have here is a basic question here. We've got a bearing here of 100 degrees. So we've got uh, two sides and an in-between angle. So we can just substitute this straight into the cosine rule. This angle here is the only angle on our diagram, so we have to call that capital A. The opposite side will therefore be called little a, so this is B and C over here. So luckily we're calculating A squared, which appears at the start of the formula. So this is going to be 7 squared, add 10 squared, minus 2 times 7 times 10 times by cos of 100. So therefore, a squared is 173.3, and then square rooting it, only taking the positive value because we have a length here, and we get 13.2. Uh, and the units here is going to be in kilometers. So that's our final answer to question four. Question 11 is a problem-solving question. The lengths of sides on a triangle are in a ratio of 2 to 3 to 4. Find the size of the largest angle. So let's draw out a triangle that roughly describes that. So we have a side here that's in a ratio of 2 to 3 to 4. And we want to find the size of the largest angle. So that must be the angle here that's opposite the largest side. So therefore, this side here must be labelled little a, and this side here must be little b, and this side over here little c. So substitute these values straight into the formula, and we get 4 squared equals 2 squared, add 3 squared, minus 2 times 2 times 3 times cos of a. Now this here is going to be 16 equals 4 plus 9 minus 12 lots of cos a and here we take this onto the other side and we get 3 divided by 12 so we get 3 here uh, equals minus 12 cos a so here we divide by minus 12 and we get minus 3 over 12 equals cos a so now doing inverse cos of minus 0.25 effectively because this is a quarter and we're going to get here 104.5 degrees uh, rounding to three significant figures we get 104 degrees because previously I had to round a seven up to get a four here to a five so it's 104 degrees to three significant figures or 104.5 to one decimal place Right, thanks very much for watching the video here. If you've not had much practice with the cosine rule, then have a go at questions from exercise 9a. Persevere through those difficult ones and ask your teacher for help. Thanks for watching.